Good morning, I'm Joe. And I'm David. And we want to welcome you to our homeschooled chapel this morning. You know, it's kind of a misty morning out there, or at least it was yeah, misty. It got a little heavier. Yeah, yeah. It's now, like it's now like, it's raining. <laughs> it's falling from the sky, and uh, so it's a it's a pretty cool morning though here yeah. at the wilds of New England. I was looking out the window here, just right over our courtyard. Got the uh, we got some um, fall decorations that are going up. Mums going into the flower pots and pumpkins. It's, you that, know? it's that time of year. It is that time of year. And uh, just to see the mist just hanging mm -hmm. over the mountain, yeah. the hillside there. It's just yeah. gorgeous. It is. Beautiful time to come up to camp. And in fact, we just had um, some of our, our school camps mm -hmm. this past week. And so maybe some of you were there for those school camps. And then even down in North Carolina, they had they had school camps down there too, the same week. It lines up. Yeah. That's cool. And then uh, this weekend, we have um, our ladies retreat with... Um, uh, Reba Bowman, she's coming in, and yeah. so it's ladies and girls. Some of you girls might even be coming uh, this weekend to our retreat. So we want to welcome you to our campsite, even during this fall season. Feel free to come and visit us. But today, we're here in the studio because we've got chapel. Yeah. And uh, since you can't be here with us today, we're coming to you live. And so we're, we're excited about today and uh, dipping into our lesson. Um, you know, David, I was thinking back about last week. Uh, we had this first chapel of the, of the whole school year. We had a lot of new guests, yeah. you know, a lot okay. of new students uh, joining us. And so some of you guys are just getting your feet wet with homeschool chapel and tuning in live. And uh, some of you, you did your homework assignment. Good job. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so A plus there, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I want to go through and just rehearse some of the homework assignments. If you're not familiar with our website, it's right on the wilds of New England, uh, dot org. On our website there, you go to the homework page or go to the, go to the homeschool chapel page. Mm -hmm. And then there's a homework form that you can fill out for each, each chapel. It just helps you apply what last week's lesson was about, and then even think about it in a different way. So we asked some questions on there and just went through um, seeing if they were listening, and most of them were. That's pretty good, okay, unless you guys are just really good with your memory and you know these things already. <laughs> um, but we were talking last week, and we started our study on bibliology. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of you guys answered those questions really well. I hope that you're understanding not just what the Bible is, you know, it's this book yeah. written by all these people and it was written in Greek and Aramaic, Hebrew, yeah. and, and some of that nitty gritty about the Bible. But I hope you're learning how to apply it too. Um, at the end, I asked some questions about um, just any other questions from the lesson. I was thinking people would have, you know, more in depth questions. <laughs> and, you know, we got some interesting ones, okay? Yes. So, Carter. Yeah. Cooper, Cooper from Florida, he asks, do you like pineapple on pizza? Age-old question. Does Everybody it, asks that. Does it even go on pizza? It's a fruit. It is a fruit. <laughs> but, but tomatoes are technically so, exactly. fruit too. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, Cooper, I'm sorry. I don't like pineapples on my pizza, okay? I, I second that. <laughs> okay, sorry. Personal sorry. opinion there. Uh, Kate from Pennsylvania, she asks, do you like soft pretzels? We actually oh, have them over yeah. in our sweet shop. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's I soft love pretzels. a soft pretzel. A little bit of butter and a sprinkled salt on there. Mm -hmm. Hits the spot. Or dip them in hot cheese. Ooh, very yeah. good, very good. That's good. Um, some of you were asking about Rand's arm. Rand will be with us oh, next yeah. week. He's actually traveling to do a, um, a teen retreat this weekend. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's super busy with traveling uh, this weekend. But he's going to be here next week. And uh, he had surgery on his rotator. Yeah. He had a torn rotator cuff. And so he had a surgery on his arm. And uh, he's, he's in the men's. I mean, he's healing. He's, he's getting better. <laughs> he is. Yeah. He's up still and up. up and around and moving around. But um, pray for him as he yeah. recovers. Uh, Grace from California, she mentioned she was she's studying bibliology in her doctrines class. Oh, that's great. So um, she's doing that. I'm curious, is that a high school Bible doctrines class? Maybe you'll have to um, write in your comments yeah. next time because, you know, we've got Bible doctrines in, at college level mm -hmm. and, and seminary level. Yeah. I know you're taking some seminary classes. Yeah. Have you have you done anything with bibliology? A little bit. It gets it gets deep and it's so, it's so good. I mean, yeah. I'm learning a lot. And what we're doing here, I hope you know, that we're just kind of this big 
picture, broad overview. All right. Yeah. I could I could spend oh, yeah. days and it's, days yeah. into each each different little part, and there's so many different things you can study um, to understand, even appreciate the depth of. I mean, the Bible. Joe, actually, the more I learn about bibliology and the Bible, it's like the more I feel like I don't know about it. Yeah. But. It, my, my knowledge is ever growing, and I think that's what God's call is to do. Learn about yeah. it, read about it, and understand it. Sadly, that was one of the biggest takeaways that I had from my <laughs> yeah. seminary days. <laughs> you I know, understand. It's like, I learned how much I don't know, okay? Yeah. And, and that, yeah. that actually is a good thing for me to, to force myself to study more. Um, Luke from Massachusetts, he was asking what our theme is for camp next year. Do you Ooh. know? Is there's it, there's a hint. Oh, we go on the show. I was oh, gonna say no. we might sometimes we put a brochure behind us. Um, so our theme for next year is a Western adventure. Oh, yeah. All right, that's that's up here at the wilds of New England. Uh, you'll have to hear about North Carolinas later. Mm. But um, Kate from North Carolina, there she's tuning in. She said, "Would you really want to skydive from outer space? <laughs> really? Also, on a scale of one to ten, how good are you at reading Greek? Uh, first of all, skydiving from space." Mm. Um, not quite space, but that I, high up. You ever seen the guys that do this? Yeah, go up it's in a amazing. weather balloon. It's crazy. Get out of this pod, and they're like they're they look like spacemen, but they're still under gravity, you know, so they can yeah. literally just fall off. Amazing! It's so like cool. it's just incredible. So cool. And then they break the speed of sound. And, okay, no, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I just thought it'd be really really cool to be up there standing on the edge of space. And, it would uh, be cool. That'd be cool. Now um, you're Greek. How's your Greek? Greek? Oh, dude. Reading it. <laughs> it's been a while since I've actually read through the Greek, and I'm not very good at it. On a scale of 1 to 10, I hope my Greek teachers are not listening. <laughs> I'm probably like a 2. Okay? Oh, it's that bad. Yeah. But the tools that are here, oh, the yeah. interlinear and translations, and yeah. I take my logos, and I hover over uh, a Greek word, and yeah. I'm like, Oh, I know that word, kurios, logos, and mm -hmm. you can you can see what it is, and, and then it all comes back to you, and so it helps to to use those tools. Um, Grace uh, from South Carolina, she was asking about uh, translations of the Bible, and this is a great question. Actually, a lot of mm. debate can be wrapped in this question. She says, with translations of the Bible, if if in a certain translation, it's actually a paraphrase, and she used a good word there, a paraphrase yeah. of what the Bible says. Should we even consider that to be a translation of the Bible? Um, or, or, even, or should we even say that it is the Bible itself? So is a paraphrase a translation of the Bible? What do you think? As, as long as, it, you know, providing that it keeps the original, you know. The text. The text, yeah. So when we say a translation... That's taking a word from the Greek mm -hmm. and taking the meaning of it and writing out just what the Bible says. Um, we, can, we can quote John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. We're quoting a translation of the Bible. That, that Bible verse was translated into the English language for us to memorize. But if I said, you know what John 3.16 says? It says that God loves the world, and He loves the world so much right. that He can... Yeah. Jesus, Jesus came to earth, and He yeah. died on the cross for us. Isn't that cool? Yeah. A paraphrase. It's a paraphrase. I'm just yeah. taking the meaning of it, and I'm translating it. Yeah. But you know what I said? I said, John 3.16 says this. And, and yes, we can trust even a paraphrase or even the translation to be what the Word of God says mm -hmm. as long as it's translated correctly. Yeah. Now, I will say, there are some paraphrases out there that are not great, yeah. <laughs> you know, because people it, it uses people's interpretation of the Bible. And so that's a really deep question. And it's a I good question. It is a, a good very question. good question. Um, a few other little things about the Bible. We mentioned this last week, and this is where we're going to pick up. When we talk about the Bible as our final authority, um, 2 Timothy 3.16 was our key verse here. Okay. 
that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. What does inspiration mean? Quiz? It's inspired, breathed out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> breathed out. And if you were to take that Greek <laughs> and you were to translate it, you'd see the word breathed yeah. out by God. God yeah. breathed it. Pneuma, that right. word is in there. Um, it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. I mentioned the variety of the Bible, and man, I love um, reading different portions of Scripture. Like in the Old Testament, there are some books that are um, they're, they're prophetic, some yeah. are history, some are poetry. So there's a lot of variety of the Bible. As we, you know, you cannot talk about the you know, bibliology without talking about the different testaments, the Old and the New Testament, okay? Mm -hmm. They're the two portions of Scripture. And you could almost say the Old Testament is before Christ, and the New Testament talks about Christ. It's after He was, he was born into the world. And so there's this, um, um, the divisions even within the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those are the law, and then you have Pentateuch. History, yeah, the Pentateuch, yeah, um, and then you have poetry, major prophets, minor prophets. The Bible is divided up into these different genres, these different categories, and it, and just knowing and understanding some of these categories can really help you when you read the Bible. Yeah, but even to get to the New Testament and read about Jesus in you know in human form on our, on Earth in the Gospels, that's that's helpful too. And, and what I want to dip into today is actually how there's so many commands that we start seeing in the New Testament that are written just for us. And that, I mean, yes, they're written for the people there, but, but they, are, they, are, they apply to us as well. And so this is, this is where we start to see the effect of the Bible. And, okay, David, I have to admit, <laughs> as I was writing this on my PowerPoint, I said, the Bible has an effect. Oh, um, yeah. Is that the right word? I think, Do you I know think it? it is. Yeah. Okay, so if you've ever done English, okay, you know the English <laughs> language is very difficult. Yes. And I'll admit right now I had to Google this one and stare at my screen for a long time. Is it this effect? Is a, this isn't one of those exceptions, right? No, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of those. <laughs> effect or effect? <laughs> All right. This is, this is the difficult part. <laughs> So as we look at this, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip back into the effect of the Word of God with our bibliology lesson. David's going to slip off the screen, but I, wanna, I want you to take your Bible now. And I want you to go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. If you happen to see that little advertisement in our, um, our social media, we, David and I were doing a little bit of a... Um, a Bible drill. I don't know if you were ever in elementary school and you did a sword drill um, as a kid, but when I was uh, when I was a kid, I did these sword drills. I was never all that fast. In fact, I would be kind of slow, uh, you know, turning to the right passage and standing up. But if if you were to turn in your Bible and you were to go right to the middle, you know, sometimes you'd say salt. It's right in the middle, and you knew exactly where it falls. My Bible falls right to this passage because Psalm 119, verse 105, is one of my favorites. And here's the effect that the Bible has. The first thing it says in Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word, or the Bible, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Here's the effect that the Bible has. The Bible enlightens and it, it, it lights up our path so we can see where we're going. The other day I was, I was working on a, on a house and we had cut all the electricity in this house and I was working kind of late into the night and I, you know, I was working away and I, I, had, some, I had some light in the house just with a, a little uh, work light, but I had a headlamp on and I was working away and I, all of a sudden I, um, I, I started looking at my watch. I was like, oh wow, it's kind of late. So I started getting ready to leave, and I walked downstairs, and there was someone shining a flashlight into the window, and there was this really bright light. I could see it shining on in the whole room. I was like, oh, no, what's going on? Someone's outside. They're you know, staring inside my house. And so I go outside. It was a police officer. <laughs> he, had, he had heard uh, reports of uh, 
someone being too loud in the house next door. And so um, I was using hammers and stuff. I didn't think anything of it. My kids weren't there or anything, and I was just working away. And uh, apparently I had disturbed the neighbors and kept them awake. And so the police officer's like, hey, you need to cut it out. <laughs> Here's my light, my little tiny light that's, uh, that's up on my forehead. And he was wondering, how in the world are you working in this house without any lights on? What are you even doing in there? And it is a good question. Why would I wander around in a house beating on stuff? And he, he was probably thinking, man, someone's in there trying to steal something. And, you know, it's, that's not good. But here I had this little flashlight, this tiny little light on my forehead. And I could see everything that I needed to. I didn't even think about how late it was because I could see what, exactly what I was doing. You see, the Bible is this light for our feet. It shines right where we need to go. It, it shines exactly on the next step of life. If you were to read through the Bible on a daily basis, you're going to start to see that you need it every day. In Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. It shines ahead of you to show you the decisions you need to make. Um, I don't know how many decisions I've made just because the Bible has said, this is what you need to do. Some of my favorite passages that I go to and I, I use them to light up my understanding would be Ephesians 4. It talks about the put off, renew, and put on. It talks about lying. It says, stop lying and speak the truth with your neighbor. It says, stop stealing so that you can labor so you can have something to give to people who need it. In verse 29, it talks about corrupt communication, and it says, put those things out of your mouth. I don't know how many times I've seen corrupt communication, you know, that, that could come out of my mouth, but I know the Bible says, don't let those things happen, but rather edify, build people up with your words. And then it says, be kind one to another tenderhearted, forgiving one another. And so as I go into a day, I, I, I think, you know, as I read that in the morning, I think, okay, wait, today I need to be kind with my words. And it's lighting the path for my day in this one little area. It could be just one area of my speech. And that day, the Word of God gave me light. And the Word of God does this in, 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 in your life specifically, for you personally, and let it enlighten your life. So the Word of God, it enlightens your way. But not only that, it feeds you. And the Bible feeds you by giving you the nourishment that you need spiritually. I brought with me an apple. I, I thought how appropriate, you know, for a uh, homeschool chapel classroom. You know, the quintessential picture of a classroom always has an apple in it. I think it's usually red. But here is, here's my apple. You know, I could eat this apple, and um, yeah, I can remember the, the phrase, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, and, and it helps keep me healthy. This morning, um, we had breakfast, and I know if I didn't get my breakfast this morning, I'd be struggling to, to make it through the day. I just, I need food to wake me up. I need food to feed me and to, and to give me nourishment. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, As newborn babes, these babies, they desire milk. Here's how we should be as Christians. We should desire the sincere milk of the Word so that we can grow thereby. If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. I mean, of all people, I mean, babies see the importance, or we see the importance of food to nourish a baby. They need it so that they can grow. Just yesterday, I got a new little nephew. All right, he was born. And so it's kind of cool to have a new little baby in the family. And um, he was born at, you know, like 10 a.m. And, and immediately you start seeing this baby starting to cry, wanting food, wanting milk. And it's, it's only natural for a baby to cry and want milk milk. But you know, it's, it's interesting to think about some of my friends who are Christians and they don't, 
they don't really read the Bible very much. And, and I've even talked to some of them recently and, and, and to hear, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not really reading anything right now. I don't really have much of a Bible reading plan. Um, devotions, I don't, I don't really do that. And, and they're not reading the Bible on a daily basis. Maybe they go to church on Sunday and they hear a Bible verse. And they, maybe they, they hear something from their friends, but they're not personally reading it. If you're not reading it, it's like you're starving yourself spiritually. The Bible, the Bible feeds us spiritually so that we can grow. I mean, that baby, you know, this little baby was born. His name is Justice, all right? Justice Shepherd, all right? And it's kind of a cool name, but I think you think about this baby that, that will eventually grow. You know, if I was holding that baby here and I was you know, kind of holding Justice, here's baby Justice, oh, he's so cute. And I'm doing homeschool chapel with a baby in my arm and all oh, you guys are distracted the whole time. I know, you'd just be looking at the baby, you know, spitting up all over me or something like that. And maybe next year I do the same thing and I bring a baby in here and you're like, you write in the comments, who is that? Is that, is that Justice? Yeah, this is Justice. You guys remember baby Justice. And here I am holding this baby. And, and then later on, you know, a couple years later, you see me, you come to camp and I'm holding the baby. Hey, who's this? Oh, this is Justice. You remember Justice. And this is like five years later. You're thinking, uh, Joe, there's something wrong with that baby. <laughs> it's not growing. The baby, babies are supposed to grow. It's only natural. As they are nourished and fed, babies will grow. Same thing is with Christians. It is only natural for a Christian to grow. You notice that word here, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word so that you can grow thereby. You need to grow. And I love even that next verse that says, this will be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. He's good. I hope that not only are you reading the Bible and enjoying the being nourished by the Bible, and even before we started, I asked David what his favorite Bible um, book was. He said, Ruth. It's kind of cool. You know, Ruth is his favorite. And, and sometimes we have that favorite Bible passage or favorite book of the Bible or favorite story or favorite, you know, study to go through. Um, I, I think mine recently has been Philippians and just loving Philippians. And it kind of changes every once in a while. But our tastes change too. If I were to t ask you, what's your favorite food? Think about it for me, just, just really quickly. Think about what your favorite food is. And some of you who know me well enough, you probably know my favorite is steak. I love a nice, juicy ribeye steak smothered in butter and salt and seasoning and all this kind of stuff. Oh, it's so good, and I just love eating steak. Some of you guys are like, oh, I love, you know, like, pizza or ice cream or whatever. You have your favorite kinds of food and the, the joy that it brings to you, that's the kind of joy that you should have from uh, not just your, your time in the Bible, but from your relationship with God. And that's what, your, that's what your time in the Bible is. It's just developing a relationship with God. So get into the Bible and figure out that it is good and it feeds you. Not only does the Bible enlighten and feed, it cuts. What do I mean by this? Now, I brought with me a little knife because I just got it in the mail this morning. <laughs> I had this little package sitting on, on my desk, and there was a pocket knife inside, you know? It's a kind of cool thing. And they had it engraved, and they're just showing us, hey, look, we can put your name on here. Here's the wilds of New England, and it puts our phone number. Well, you know, I've had pocket knives before, and I remember one of the first pocket knives that I ever used. It was like a, a locking pocket knife. You know, this one, you can open it and you can just close it. It's pretty simple. Well, one that I had, it had a button on the back and I didn't know about it. And I was a little kid. I was like four years old. And I remember trying to close that knife and I pushed and I put it on the table and I, 
And finally the thing slipped out of my hand and it came down and cut my thumb. It was a bad cut. It was really, it was really bloody. <laughs> and uh, it was one of those cuts where I you know, had a little flap of skin that it cut back and I could make the flap talk to you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, here's this cut. And when I think about cutting my finger, I'm like, I don't want that to happen again. So why would we say that the Bible cuts us? Why would we even want that to happen? Well, I'll tell you this. Sometimes you, you go to the doctor for a checkup. And they might even look you over, do some scans and tests and say, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, man, but it looks like you have cancer. You have a, you have a tumor. You have, you have something that, that needs to be cut out. What will they do? They take you and lay you out on an operating table and they take a knife. Hopefully not a pocket knife. <laughs> Hopefully it's a, scal a scalpel, like cleaned and sanitized and everything else. But they take a knife and they cut you open so that they could cut out whatever's killing you and hurting you. Now look at this passage. In Hebrews 4, verse 12, it says, The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of your soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible is being described like a sword, a sharp, cutting instrument that pierces into your life and reveals, what does it say? The thoughts and intents of your heart. You know, I could look at you and I could guess what's inside of you, what you're thinking, what you believe, what you feel, but I don't really know. You know what the Bible does? When you read the Bible, this is a living book. That's what it means when it says it's quick, it's alive, and it's powerful. It can actually convict you of your sin and show you where you need to change. And so it does this, and it shows you the more you read it, the more you're going to realize that you have sin in your life. And the Bible, it cuts it out. Not only is the Bible enlightening for us, it shows us the, it shows us the way. It shines the light on our path. It feeds us spiritually. It nourishes us so that we can grow. It cuts out the sin in our lives, but it also reveals. Uh, kind of like the light, this, this is another area where the Bible is like a, it just shows you what's inside of you. In James 1, it talks about how the Bible is like a mirror. And this guy goes before the mirror and he looks at himself and he sees his natural face. And then he goes his way and just forgets what manner of man he was. He forgets what he was like. This morning, believe it or not, I cut myself shaving, right? And here I am shaving on and I cut my lip like right up here. And it was, it was a pretty bad one. And, you know, I took my shower, I got out and there's blood coming down my face. <laughs> if I came into work like that, Everyone would be like, oh, yeah, that's scary. <laughs> you got blood coming out of your face. You know, take care of that. But you know what I did? I looked in the mirror like several times. And I said, okay, is the blood gone yet? Oh, is the blood gone? Okay. Some of you girls, you might look in the mirror several times during the day. Is my hair okay? <laughs> Some of you guys are like, eh, who cares? Do I have a booger? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and... And you need that. Several times a day sometimes you need to look in the mirror to see what, you're, what you look like. And, and if there's a hair sticking up, if there's something on your face, it would be foolish of you not to change it, not to get rid of it, not to make it look better. And here's what the Bible does. It's like a mirror that shows us what's inside of our hearts, the, the thoughts and the intents of our heart and where our motivations are. It convicts you of pride. It shows you where you have sin in your life and it, it points those things out. So let it do that and, and change. 
Don't just leave it there. So the Word of God reveals. I hope that you're taking the Bible on a daily basis and you're letting it do these things. And so for the homework assignments for this week, I want you to do this. I want you to take Psalm 119. And some of these can double up, okay? So so read through every question first. From Psalm 119, I want you to identify three ways that that the Bible, God's Word, can help you to live for Him this week. All right, And there are lots in Psalm 119. Obviously, it's the longest chapter in the Bible. So take your time and read through it. And then number two, what do you think that Hebrews 4.12 means? Remember we were saying that it's quick and powerful? That means it's alive and it's active. What does that mean for your life? And then number three is more of a, just an assignment. Spend 30 minutes of undistracted time, or, or your best attempt at <laughs> some undistracted time, even if you have a little brother or sister making some noise in the other room. Spend 30 minutes of time reading your Bible, and then just write down, what did you read, and what did you learn from your reading? I would love for to, to just to hear what God is teaching you from your own personal Bible study, and I hope that as you study not just the Bible itself. You know, today we've looked at a lot of verses about the Bible, but I hope that you're learning to to read it as God's Word to you. We can know a lot about the Bible, but do you know the Bible? And do you know the author of the Bible, God? Jesus Christ, who is the Word. As you get into the Bible, let's work on not just learning more about Him, but let's get to know Him personally. So I'm going to pray and ask God to work in your lives the rest of this week. Father, thank you so much for each one of these guys and girls that have joined us. pray that you would use your Word and help them to develop a a trust and even um, an understanding of the authority of God's Word, but also just to get into it and read it and apply it. Be glorified with what you do in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next time.